it's the soap man and I'm doing something a little different this evening I'm actually not making soap this evening I really wanted just to come to here to just give you all of you all of my supporters and fans a big thank you I never really expected this to turn out this way um, my soaping journey started a few years ago uh, watching the Beverly Hillbillies um, I'm a child of the 70s. I grew up in the 70s, and of course, even in the 70s, those shows were reruns, but I loved watching the Beverly Hillbillies, and still to this day at age 50, I love watching the Beverly Hillbillies. And if you've seen it, which most of you probably have, love it or hate it, you probably know what I'm talking about. The character of Granny was always out at the cement pond cooking her lye soap. And I was just watching it one day and watched Granny cooking her lye soap by the cement pond. And I didn't even know what lye soap meant. I just always heard it was bad. You know, those old shows, I'm going to get a bar of lye soap and wash all this off me. And of course, it's going to wash all your skin and this and that and blah, blah, blah. And started researching it and bought some basic equipments. Bought some lard, a little bit of lye, stick blender. Um, found a recipe on the internet somebody already had made up. I didn't know about any lye calculator or anything and made it and had 100% lard soap which does not have the best lather but you know and it was hard as a brick used it and used it and used it gave it away I ended up shaving it down to make dishes I used it, shaving it down to uh, wash clothes with it I mean I just had to get rid of it. there was so much of it and then I started expanding from that and learning different recipes and different techniques and I found a lot of you on YouTube which has really helped me uh, two in particular are Soap Queen and Soaping 101, uh, both on YouTube. And I just kind of wanted to, you know, get back some of what I learned. Uh, if you don't know, this is not a business for me. This is a hobby. Uh, I'm not looking for any bragging points. It's just how it is. Um, I make a batch of soap every week. And uh, what am I going to do with all that soap since I don't sell it? I give it away. Our church partners with other churches every Saturday we get together um, and you know like I, for instance I do my soap and the church provides wash rags and other personal care toiletries so that's kind of what I do one of them provides a hot breakfast others provide different types of food so that's the way to kind of give back to and that's the reason I'm doing this video is to give back to you and to say thank you for all this um, I'm not making soap this week. I've been gone the two, past two Saturdays, and I had enough soap and personal care items and rags and wash rags and everything bagged up for two weeks, and a lady took care of me one week, and apparently somebody didn't or wasn't able to go the second week. So I have uh, one, two, three, four, five weeks of soap already curing, plus what I'll be giving out tomorrow. So I'm not soaping. I actually did soap this week, I'm doing something a little bit different. I'll probably put the video up next week. Made a couple of different soaps in my muffin mold. Um, this is the exact same recipe. I'll talk to you about these a little bit later. This obviously is not going to be a cutting video because they're in a muffin mold and popped out. What I'm going to do with these is do a lather test video because I tried to mimic a hotel bar soap. We'll get into more of that later. I am going to this evening test a scent oil. I do this often. Brambleberry, if you buy a big enough order, will usually give you a free sample of a scent oil. This is about a half an ounce and it's peppermint second distillation, actually essential oil. When they give me a free sample, I like to test it in 100% coconut. So there's no color, nothing fancy, no frills at all about it. This is 100% coconut though. I love 100% coconut oil because you can put 20% super fat and still have amazing lather. Great for your skin. This one is um, bergamot and black tea. This is one I'm definitely going to buy. Behaves very well, does not discolor. I wanted to show you this too. Do you remember several weeks ago? This looked familiar. This was one that I made. I think I had some bad lye. It didn't set up. I cooked it down. Just got it all into this. And I finally just gave up on them because they were just so soft. Uh, threw them away. But I kept a few of these. I had a nice big thick chunky one for myself and a few others. I thought they've been sitting for several months now. This actually was not a fail. This actually is a decent bar of soap. doesn't have a lot of lather because it's super, super heavily fatted, but that's been good for this winter. Um, also, like Granny on the Beverly Hillbillies, I use my lye soap. Uh, the scraps, just like she did, shave them down to wash dishes with and shave it down sometimes to use laundry. 
Uh, I did a video earlier this year. Does this look familiar? If you watched the video, yep, I'm going to be washing dishes with this. This isn't something you eat in the canning jar. This is cold processed scraps that were melted down, uh, put into the jar. I'm going to be washing dishes with this. Um, but basically, that's how I got my journey started was watching Granny on the Beverly Hillbillies. So thank you, Irene Ryan. She is no longer with us. She died quite some time ago. Actually, I think in the 70s she died. But I think she'd be very proud of how she inspired me. And I just want to come here to once again say thank you to all of you, all of your support, all of your kind comments, all of your suggestions when I have problems. Thank you from the Soap Man. Have a blessed weekend. And I will see you next week for the cutting, and excuse me, for the lather test for this soap, as well as the making video and the recipe. Bye.